Welcome to the sixth episode of Cooking with Martha, where we are making a chocolate pichinger with guest chef Amanda Morosky. <gasps> Amanda Fayette, I'm sorry. And that's my sister. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Tell us about a pichinger. Okay, pichinger is a traditional um, Polish dessert served at Christmas and Easter. It is a waffle layer cake that is no bake. The top layer is a glossy semi-sweet chocolate that will harden. And the inside is a jam with a cocoa, rum, and chocolate filling uh, layered in between five waffles. Um, it's called Pischinger in Polish. But, no, that's uh, German. Sorry, in German. Uh, also known as a Pschekwatka in Polish. And um, happy Easter. And it's a very easy... Uh... And not very sweet. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Look forward. Okay, so this is what you're going to need for pichinge. Now, you're going to need a scale. You're going to need half a pound of softened butter, sugar, semi-sweet baker's chocolate, uh, a jam, either red currant or rose hip, that is sweet but tart. You're going to need um, Instant coffee, rum, most important part, natural vanilla. I didn't know there was a difference. There's a very big difference between the vanilla extract and natural vanilla. Okay. Uh, cocoa, natural cocoa. With no sugar in it, right? With no sugar. Rum extract, sour cream, full fat sour cream, flour, and waffles. Waffles are available in any Eastern European store in any major city. So you start with your two pounds of softened butter in the machine. And I don't actually measure sugar. I just pour in until I feel that's enough. Okay, wow, that's For now. That's two pounds of butter. That's half a pan of butter. And I turn the machine off. Yeah, I think you said two pounds. I'm sorry, I meant yeah, half a pound. Okay. Okay, now that the half pound of butter softened and is called creamed at this point with the sugar, you'll see that it's all mixed together and ready to go. Mm -hmm. The next step at this point is four spoons. That's a tablespoon? Uh, yeah, of cocoa. cocoa. So I'm just gonna go ahead, shut the machine off and drop in my four spoons of cocoa. cocoa. One, Oh, God, two, that smells good already. Two, three, three, strike, <laughs> and four. four. Done. Turn on the machine. The next step, of course, is two spoons of instant coffee. Now, the way this works best is because it, it's granular, as you can see. So you want to dilute it a little bit. So you take a little bowl with minimal amounts of water. You put in two spoons. Warm water or cold water? Doesn't matter. Of coffee. So you would mix two spoons. It warm water. Okay, so you want to mix it and dilute it a little bit so that it doesn't have the crystal chunks. All Can you diluted. Use Starbucks coffee? <laughs> Any coffee you like. Okay. And then you pour the coffee inside. <laughs> we have a. Go grab it. Some people watching here, so. Um, I use pure vanilla from Mexico. Uh, vanilla extract is fine. Pure vanilla is better. So I just pour it in and see how it goes. It's bubbly now. Now I'm going to turn it back on. And then is the family secret. Okay, I've been mixing this for less than 30 seconds. This consistency means it is not ready. But it is blended. So now you want to... How do you know it's not ready? Because you'll see the finished product and you'll be able to compare between now and the finished product. So this looks a little chunky. It's chunky and not smooth and fluffy. So at this point, you want to bring in your flavors. So I'm going to... Is this a secret of... family secret? No, okay. this is not the family secret yet. So I'm going to put in a little bit of rum extract. Why do you have to have both the extract and the real one? Because the extract gives the enhanced flavor the and the, the rum, thing. yeah, Make the sure. extract is a stronger flavor, but the rum gives the highness. Oomph. 
Okay, um, this is not the consistency that I'm looking for. I'm looking for fluff. I'm looking for a light color and I'm looking for something very spreadable. Sugar has this chemical thing and a family secret that I've discovered that makes everything smooth and easy is... You discovered or you were told? I was told. <laughs> okay. Is um, you take a small bowl mm -hmm. and you take one spoon of flour. So follow me while I show you. I'm oh, going flour. to take one spoon of flour. One so spoon. supposedly our grandmother told you this, that she went to a sugar yes. factory? Now, uh, her uh, recipe required shimiatanka. This could either be sour cream or cream, but I find that sour cream works really well. So one spoon each and you blend. Okay, so I'm gonna add this one spoon of special secret family recipe inside the bowl. And you will see the difference in the finished product in the end. Wow, that, that looks like the inside of a Three Musketeer bar. Okay, so we've been mixing on high for about three minutes. The consistency has changed significantly. Now is the time where you taste. Okay, so the idea behind this mixture is you want to mix it on high to get as much air into it as possible to make it fluffy. Okay, so I'm going to do the topping right now. The topping requires uh, six cubes of semi sweet baker's chocolate mm -hmm. with two tablespoons of butter mm -hmm. and a little splash of cream, preferably. Uh, allow it to melt on the simmer setting on your stove. If you don't have a simmer setting on a stove, you have to do a double boiler. Okay, so I have five sheets of waffle mm -hmm. and uh, each sheet is going to have a different layer. One layer is going to be the chocolate mixture we made earlier and mm -hmm. the other layer is going to be either a rose hip uh, or a red currant jam, not jelly, that is semi-sweet. So I'm going to spoon out some of the jam on this one layer so and this spread is, it evenly. This is jam, not jelly, so we're not jelly talking is, about smuckers or no, any of that? No, 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 no. Now, uh, the first layer was with the uh, jam. I am going to put down the next layer. Of tasty deliciousness? Press firmly and then add our chocolate cocoa rum mixture in the second layer. Um, now remember, the butter is softened, therefore it's kind of in a gelatinous form, which is not what you want. So as soon as the dessert is finished, it goes straight into the freezer until uh, about two hours prior to serving, at which time you cut it in squares, and it is a lot easier to cut in squares when it is frozen. And then put the next layer of waffle on top, and I'm going to repeat this step twice. Okay, so I finished all my layers. Can you describe the layers again? Okay, so the layers are jam, chocolate, cocoa, rum filling, jam, chocolate, cocoa, rum filling. I'm putting on the fifth piece. So it's five, yeah, five layers. I'm putting on the fifth piece of layer. I'm going to press firmly. And I'm going to take my chocolate melted sauce, which is very time sensitive. If you let it sit too long, it will start to harden and I am going to pour it on top. <laughs> this is the finished product, and you're gonna wanna take your spoon and clean up the sides because it's a little messy, and it goes straight into the freezer. How long uh, does this stay good for? Well, like I said, as long as it's frozen, I, I would say it lasts a very long time. Because I remember being a kid, and my grandmother would just go into the freezer and get me more. Yes. So. It's very good for a very long time, as long as it stays in the freezer. So, I'm going to take this finished product and I am going to put it in the freezer. And at time of serving, I will cut long lengths into squares. And now you have a Polish Pichinguette.